Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. And we get the back view of him. And I mean, it's just a mega. 52 yards is a long shot. Uh, Magnum P.I. is what yeah. we named him. No idea. Just what. a magnum. Yeah, just a magnum. Come on, Cam, last year we, we said probably 150, mid-150. Yeah. Same Doe from the morning come out with that nine-pointer. Here, here steps out this 90-inch eight point. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ah. I'm like, okay, well, there's still a buck back there grunting. Yeah. And then I'll step like another 90-inch eight-pointer. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. You're like, I'm like, deer, right there. Yeah, like and he's 30 already yards. 30 yards. Yeah. He he was literally five yards from the base of the tree. Could have been had a buck down at 140 in the afternoon back there deep on public. Three does come out pretty early. It was like 245, 24 yard shot, sent the combat veteran. And I tell you what, man, dude, it just smoked. We always get so jacked up when the other person kills. It's just almost like we got it done. Yeah. And when you killed that doe, I was like, hell yeah, man. And we come down here to Missouri. My ass called me one more time. I'm like, is it a good buck? And he goes, yeah, real good, solid buck. I'm like, all right, boom. <laughs> and the deer just drops. For sure. Super special to me. Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. This is the Whitetail Legacy Podcast coming at ya. You guys are probably tired of listening to my voice by now. You've been <laughs> listening to us for I don't know how many episodes. If this is your first one, um, we talk about whitetails on this. And this week we got Josh Prophet, the BG OG bow hunter. It's actually BG bow hunter. I just threw the OG in there because he is the o- he's an OG of this podcast. You know what I mean? It's well deserved. Yeah. Um, always enjoy talking to this guy. This is a little different episode we're throwing at you. The name might confuse you a little bit, but it's all about positivity and, and trying to get it done this year. You know what I mean? And, uh, hopefully you listen to this, pick something up, maybe try something new, maybe stop trying something you're trying, <laughs> 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 whatever, whatever it takes, right? Let's get into the people that make this possible. Get into the show. Started with the VIP. Do you have the VIP veteran shout out? Yeah, this week's shout out is going to be uh, William Trout, and uh, we don't get a lot of these, but William was a Vietnam veteran, and um, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's super cool. Those guys, you know, I just heard the horror stories about when they got back, then people were thinking that they were just murderers, and that was the peace, love era, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, for sure, so yeah. Didn't these see- guys came back, and they didn't get no, you know, no red praise. carpet, no yeah. praise, no nothing, so... Um, when I see a Vietnam veteran hat, I'm thinking, man, this guy was in the jungle sweating it out. For sure. Hardcore. It, it has a different effect on yeah. me, I will say, yeah. And you can always you can always see a little bit of grit in those guys that yeah, have exactly. those hats. You yeah, know I, I mean? agree. So big shout out to him, man. And anybody else that's out there, um, Vietnam vet, I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, shout out to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. But uh, any veterans out there, send us a message. We'd love to shout you out. ECW calls all your custom calls needs embrycustomwoodworking.com if you guys are interested in getting grunt tube goose call duck call whatever you need um the buck book um one thing i really am enjoying about this is they're just they're starting a community you know what i mean and that's hard to do in the hunting realm because people are savages we talk about this a little bit on this episode with mm-hmm. the facebook you know um if you post that on Facebook, you're gonna get you're gonna get hosed. Age my deer or score my deer, or whatever. You know, what I mean, it's you're gonna get people are, are not gonna be nice to you. And this is a community built around doing that, where you're gonna get respect. You know, and and if you're a new hunter or someone that's just super jack, you know, you might have got your first giant on cam. You remember when you got your first giant on camp? Oh, yeah. You're like, I have no idea what this thing scores, how it's old huge. it is. That's all but I you want to show people, right? You want to be like, <laughs> yeah. hell yeah, look at this thing, you know? Right. And you can put it on here, talk about it, you know, put your state in there, and make make friendships over deer pictures. You know what I mean? They're just trying to make a community, help people out, and uh, I think it's I think it's super cool. I think they got a really good thing going on. So if you guys want to do that, check them out at buckbook.com. 
Yeah, the Exodus Trail Cam tip of the week. Yeah, the tip of the week is you should probably get an Exodus render. Um, that Exodus render has been really solid, and you guys have probably heard us talk about our trials and tribulations of you know running trail cameras in the summertime with the with the grass picks and the blanks and stuff. But that render it, that's is the most non-blank taking cam I've ever seen. Yeah, if I get if I get a notification. It, it's a deer. Yeah. And that is one thing that I really like about that. That Scout Tech app is super yeah. solid. I really like that you can share the pictures with And, them. yeah, I would say, yeah, you logged super. into my profile or your, I shared my profile with you. And uh, one last thing is Bud Heavy's confirmed back on camp. Oh, yeah, Bud Heavy. I haven't told you guys that. Bud Heavy's back on Booner Town. So we have two bucks. Neither of them are Booner, but they're on Booner Town. <laughs> that are shooters. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> we both have history with them, so. That's exciting. So, and uh, chaos, and him have both been on the render. Yes. So that's cool. No right. TT. Nope. No TT. Not yet. <sighs> Ingram's outdoor obsession. All your taxidermy needs right there at a Oneida, Illinois. Check him out. Solid dude. Solid friend. Solid taxidermist. You got Last Breath TV. Yeah, last week uh, we told you guys you have to subscribe to that YouTube. It's gonna carry you all the way to season, but. Um, if that's not enough for you, they also have a podcast that they call a hunt cast. And, um, man, I tell you what, r like from turkey season on, they have just been putting out some informational stuff and it has been great content. And they also have helped us learn how to, that they do their mock scrapes, which yeah. is something that we're These guys are going fire deep at mock scrapes. Into, yeah. yeah, we're going deep into the, to the mock scrapes this year. Uh, we've already got some set up. We still got a couple to get going. And um, it's all from their their hunt cast. So yeah. um, we picked up exactly the products that they're using, and that's something that we've picked up through obviously their hunt cast, but also their video content. Yeah. So yeah, check out their uh, their mock scrape hunt cast for sure podcast. They call it a hunt cast, but it's a podcast for sure. Check out um, check out the the Last Breath TV hunt cast. Um, super solid guys. Like I said, um, we were on there a while back. Yeah. So. Yeah couple episodes, right? Yeah, a yeah, couple. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we went back yeah. to back. Yep. So, all right, guys. Let's get into the show. All right, guys. We got Josh Prophet on, the local legend of <laughs> Whitetail Legacy Podcast. How's it going tonight, Josh? Man, it is going. I am feeling thankful. I'm a few bush lights in. And, um, yeah, I'm ready to, ready to do this podcast. Heck yeah, man. It's always, we're always <laughs> jacked when you come on. Cause we know it's like going to be a super enjoyable, uh, you know, episode with us talking and it's people are going to love it, but it's just cool to chit chat with you. You know I mean? It's hard to get on the phone for an hour and a half, two hours and talk to someone, but podcasts make that possible, you know, and. And there's not a, there's not a lot of people I would call just randomly and talk that long <laughs> yeah. to without a podcast. But you're one of those, man. I just hey, what's up? What's up, man? <laughs> yeah, I know that's what I told you. I want to reach out back to you. I reached out to y'all like, man, I really enjoy doing this with y'all, and y'all put out a very solid podcast. Like it's on the top of my list. I mean, I I pretty much got all of them underneath my belt that y'all put out. So. Man, some of them were rough, but wow. <laughs> we appreciate it, man. But um, I just want to do a quick shout out to you, dude. Uh, you post stuff on social, and like I, I know I personally told you, but if you don't follow him, BG Bow Hunter, it's a, it's BG underscore Bow Hunter, right? Yep, BG okay, yeah. underscore Bow Hunter. You guys need to follow him. This guy is not only a solid dude; he's a straight savage. He won't <laughs> tell you, but this guy is hardworking. Kills giant deer, humble, and he's lifting heavy ass weights, <laughs> plain and simple. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I was gonna say, kick your ass in a merp. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, just uh, the amount of motivation I've got from you and Chad, uh, homie, including you know, homie's down sixty pounds, right? Sixty five, yeah. Sixty five. I'm down. Well, I can't remember thirty something. You're, yeah, I would say almost forty. Yeah, thirty eight pounds. We're both the strongest we've ever been, and it's fr from following guys like you and getting that motivation. And it's not only that. I mean, you're you're always you know you're showing you're with your kids. We know that you're a solid dad. You know you got your faith worked out. You got your work. You know everything's lining up. You're just a solid dude to follow. And I just want to do a huge shout out to you before we started this podcast because 
the amount of motivation I get from that little you benching or whatever you're, you know, you're posting, I'm like, oh, Josh is grinding. I got to grind. You know what I mean? Or Josh is going. I got to go. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So I, I do the same thing with homie. I'm like, homie ain't skipping today. I ain't, I ain't skipping. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> it's, it's those people like you that I look up to and Chad and homie to, to make me a better person. And if you've done that from, you know, the, the two years that we've known you, not only a better, you know, hunter, but just a better doing the right thing. You know I mean? I know you're big on that also. And that's something that we added on the end of the podcast. Just try to be a, try to be a solid dude, you know, cause there's someone out there watching no matter how small you are or what you got going on. And I, uh, I greatly appreciate that. And, you know, like a lot of these podcasts, like they're, um, they're really ripping out like the products and, you know, the how to's, but man, none of that means shit if things aren't good at home or your relationship with God isn't good. Like you're not going to get anywhere in the woods if, um, if those things aren't right. And I know that from experience, so I'm no better than no one. Yeah. I mean, you got to be solid with a lot of stuff when, and you just got to, if you can get solid on all that, when whitetail time comes around, you're good to rip. And that's why, you know, just like today, we try to get all the stuff done today on Friday when it's 99. Mm -hmm. You know, feels like 99. It's 92, feels like 99. Sunday, it's going to be 65 in the morning. But I'm like, I'm going to wake up Sunday and cook breakfast for my kids. You know what I mean? I work in an ass load lately. Let's just go out when it's 99 and do all this marching around, hanging trail cameras, so I can have another morning with my kids instead of out in the woods. You know, and and you do that stuff now because – a month from now, you're going to be in the woods trying to kill something. You know what I mean? And I know that you're super limited on time to hunt and, uh, you know, even, even more than most guys and it's still getting it done. But I know that if something you had three days to hunt and something came up with your daughter or, you know, something came up, you'd be like, I'm not hunting today. You know what I mean? There's priorities in life and you got to get that figured out. Once you get that solid whitetail, they'll fill in. And, you know, just having everything taken, everything else taken care of, you know, Cody and I are putting in a ton of time right now doing, you know, everything we can to be prepared for season, you know, be sure the wife is happy, the kids are good. And that way when season comes, we are going to miss them weekends and stuff. But one thing that I've been starting to get big on is just going out, like, why do we hunt? We hunt because we love it. We enjoy the sport. And if you don't have all that shit taken care of, like, you're going to have a shit hunt. You're going to be thinking about shit you're, you should be yeah. doing, yeah. Instead of just going out there and hunting your face off. You know, go out there and just enjoy enjoy a sunset. Like, I mean, you're not going to do that forever. Go out there and, you know, watch that two-year-old, you know, run around like he don't know what he's doing because he don't. You know, that small shit is more appreciated more when everything else is at peace. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's something that everybody can take away. Man, uh you know, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, if your priorities aren't straight, you know, before you pull out of the driveway to go hunting, you know, I've, I've said it a thousand times, like, you're just waiting. You're just, you're just wasting your time. And that's, I'm just speaking for myself personally. And, you know, when I picked up that, the traditional equipment, uh, you talked about the two, just seeing the two year old and enjoying it. Like, I kind of fell off on that whole mainstream thing. You know, it was years ago. It was big buck this, you know, that. And man, it's just really, all that just leads towards like how you and I hunt. That just leads towards a bunch of stress. And, you know, I don't hunt to be stressful. Like I, I go to hunt to have a good time and to provide for my family. And if I kill something, I kill something. If I don't, then, you know, it's fine because I can go another day. My kids are taken care of and, and that's that. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about it um, when homie, you know, shot sunshine, how different your, you know, your positivity is through the season. You're having a rough season. You're having a rough year. Stuff ain't playing out. You're not enjoying that time. You know, you're like, man, you know, what what am I doing wrong? You know, and I get that way, too. You just got to – we're really going to try this year to step back. Okay, we're out here. We're enjoying this stuff. It's It sucks. We're still enjoying it. And if it, if we get it done, awesome. We're going to do everything in our power to get it done. But in the end, if it doesn't happen, wasn't your year. You know what I mean? The hunting, 
is one of the things in life that you can put as much work into as you possibly can and you're not guaranteed anything. You know what I mean? And <laughs> there's very few things out there that are like that. You know what I mean? You can put in so much effort, all your 100% of your time. You could forget about everything else to chase some giant buck and never kill that deer, never see that deer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you go to the gym, put in work, you're going to lose weight. You're going to get bigger. You're going to get faster. If you put work in your marriage, your relationship's going to get better. If you put work in your kids, your kids are going to be better. They're going to listen better. They're going to learn better. If you put work, more work at your job, you're going to make more money. I mean, all the huge things in life, if you put time in, they get better. You might get better, uh, a better hunter, but you're st you can be the best hunter in the world and not kill a deer. So that's tough, man. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. And that, that's why it's, you know, that's what everybody says. That's why it's called hunting. And, you know, that's why it's fun. Like, you know, I was on a row, killed five deer, five years in a row on public land, couple with some traditional equipment, just awesome year. And I go into what's looking like one of the best years that I'm ever going to have, you know, a deer pushing 200 couple booners and literally just everything just dies because of natural cause and it's just com i didn't do anything wrong like it was completely out of my hands and um it it was humbling you know it was i had to regroup and um i caught myself getting frustrated and i had to tell myself like you know remember why you do this remember what weapon you got in your hand like you're not working a 12-hour shift right now you, you know like you're not just enjoy it like enjoy the process try to find another one and you know it's not always about killing that next big buck it's not always about using the best newest piece of equipment it's about literally getting away releasing things and just enjoying life yep it's about getting out there and like homie said just hunt your face off man yeah let's go out there and give it all and at the end it is what it is. See, <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I go through weird. I go through mood swings. Like I won't lie. Like there's some days when I get out there and I'm just grinding. I'm checking cameras. I'm hunting deer down. I'm getting things done. There's some days I go out there. I'm just ready to relax. And there's some days when I shut that truck door. I'm like, I'm killing something today. So, I mean, just have fun. I feel like Sounds I go through fun. mood swings, but it's more like, oh, this is great. Man, my, this sucks. Man, this is great. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. <laughs> October 1, I'm the most jacked dude ever. I'm like, <laughs> yes, I'm killing everything this year. The 15th, haven't got it done. I'm like, man, yeah, you know, it's about time to do something. Rut's coming. Yep. 25th, I'm like, yeah, I'm not killing shit this year. <laughs> <laughs> haven't even seen a I buck. Haven't seen a buck, man. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you start out, you're like, everything's ready. We're good to go. It's going to be the best year ever. And then you're like, man, I suck at hunting. I don't know. I say that like 98 <laughs> times a season. I've got to be the worst hunter out there. We need to get a compilation put together yeah. of you just ripping. <laughs> of all the rips on myself. Yeah. <laughs> How man, dumb am I? Ugh. Speaking of that, I wonder, like I've always wonder, wondered like how many deer – slipped past me and i didn't know it like how many good deer slipped past me and i did like i that i literally dropped the ball on like it's it has to happen right oh yeah i'm sure it happens as much time as you spend in the woods you know i always think about like okay i hunted this stand like what if i'd have went 50 yards you right, know what i mean yeah, yeah and then you're like uh, but i mean how many times has that buck been 60 70 yards like if you if you took my whole entire bow hunting career and gave me a gun in my hand, the amount of deer I would have would, is just astonishing. But you forget about that 60, 70 yards encounter five years down the road because it didn't happen. You know, it, you didn't kill the buck, so it, it ain't some great feat. You know what I mean? But you still were 60, 70 yards right on the edge yeah. of that buck. Man. There's multiple deer that I've been right on that fringe of just, like, almost killing. You know what I mean? And... If you think about it like that, you're like, man, I, I'm, I'm doing all right sometimes. You know what I mean? No, I mean, you're right. Like, if that's 60, 70 yards, man, that's a, that is killing range. Like, you may have not have killed that deer, but like, you need to give yourself a pat on the back because it, 
a deer like that on public land or really any land, like you don't realize how many people that deer has seen or made itself around. Like it's a lot. And when you get inside that circle, especially outside the rut, like even if you didn't kill that deer, like you need to realize like, man, like I'm the man today. Like I really am the man. Like I almost made that happen, but I didn't. But like I yeah. done something. Oh yeah. You got close, man. Like you said, you're in that, you're in that i feel like if you're within that hundred yards and he don't know you're there and you, you can get closer and closer you're you're there you know what i mean you just got to fine tune and that's what homie said a couple of episodes we're right there we just got to figure out how to fine tune the stuff to get to that next level you know what i mean to get to where instead of you're having those 60 70 yard encounters you're having those 40 30 you know what i mean that 20 yard <laughs> buffer is what we need yeah we need a few yeah. more trees trees to hang a stand in. So that would need. help great. But, you know, <laughs> limited a little bit there, you know. So, uh, but we'll just go plant some. Twenty years will be yeah. Decent. We'll plant we'll plant like a walnut tree. Twenty five years will be solid. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be like fifteen foot tall. We'll be able to hunt the very tip of it. <laughs> We've hunted out a four inch tree before. No we have. Deal. All right, man. Well, uh, you got a little bit of different stuff going on this year. Uh, I kind of want you to break down a little bit of your, uh, you know, the end of last year going into this year, um, kind of what made you make the changes and what you got going on. All right, man. So 2019 was just it was really really tough on me i just had some personal things in my life going on that were just you know really really hard on me and that affected my season and i uh, i pretty much put all my eggs in a basket on one piece of property and ehd rode through town and i'm gonna say a fair number would be 60 70 percent of the deer herd, herd was killed i didn't feel like it was worth hunting so um packed up and moved about three hours away from that piece and you know packing up in the middle of the season it was just it was tough it was you know big woods it was two hours of, i was driving two hours and literally hunting or hunting and staying in a tent uh 10 degrees nights it was just it was tough man and i got on some deer i had, I had one 200 inch deer on camera another booner I, so i can't complain about that but the deer density in the big woods it was it was tough, man. The deer density was like eight to ten per square mile. I didn't see that many deer, and uh, last year was the first year I didn't kill in five years. And uh, I'm not gonna say that like I wasn't a little bit down, but when I look back at you know my life circumstances, like I felt like I I did pretty good. I I still grinded it out hard, and I gave it an honest effort and rolling into 2020 man i was i was up in the air uh this year that piece i hunted late last year i just feel like it's too far it's two and a half hour drive one way um it makes it hard on me seeing my kids it makes it hard on sleeping and work so i scratched that out and i looked at a piece it's it's kind of weird it's uh pay a trespassing fee to hunt it and um basically you buy a permit and there's property and you can hunt it's open under statewide regulations but although it's privately owned it's more ran like public uh i've started there this summer i've got on some great deer five or six shooters um but it's like you and i talked about earlier just a lot of grass reclaimed co ground not many woods what woods are there just scrubby as could be i can't personally hunt them not yet not this time of year it's just it's been tough man and um so here recently i've been thinking about doing the hunt quest challenge with a, one of my good friends joe welsh and I, I was just honest with him you know like by four days a month to hunt uh public land like i got one deer over 160 and you know, like that's what I feel like it's going to take to win this is at least me shoot a 160. And like, I just want to be like reasonable here. And I just, and I'm not sure I can get it done. And uh, he invited me to his private farm. And 
man, that's something I haven't hunted a good P. I haven't hunted private ground in, I think, 14 years. Jeez. Something, something like that. 13, 14. So I kind of have mixed feelings about it. You know, uh, I didn't sell my traditional equipment, but I bought another compound and, um, I think I'm going to hunt some private ground early. I think I'm going to try to kill one of these studs of a deer on private ground. And, um, here in Kentucky, we have a military base here that offers a second and third buck tag. And, uh, that's, that's where I'm going to head, man. I was supposed to go there today, but the, the hurricane, <laughs> You know, yeah. it came it came through, and it's been raining here all day, so I couldn't scout. But you know, basically, my goals for this year are simple, man: spend as much time with the family, put them first. I can't even hunt open in weekend because I got travel ball game. So try to kill a deer on private property. Uh, I'm actually going to try to do it in a week. I'm not sure that I can, but I'm like, I got six days I can hunt in a row. I'm going to try to kill one of them deer as soon as I can. And as soon as I kill one of them deer, I'm going to hop over to this military base that's 60,000 acres and see if I can't tag one with a longbow. Heck uh, yeah, man. Not, I'm not going to make it difficult. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to use my cameras because it's the best tool I got other than my woodsmanship in my pocket, like I always say. And I'm going to enjoy it. And it's It's been my release. If I kill this year, that's great. If I don't, then it makes two years in a row. Have you found any enjoyment in getting a compound back out? So I had, I've had really mixed feelings about it. Okay. <laughs> and I've boiled it down to, I, I'm not sure if it was an ego thing for me at first or what, but as long as I can kill one with a bow, like I'm happy. You know, I've, I've shot at three deer with with trad equipment two of them scoring pope and young i've killed three of them like i have nothing to prove to to nobody like i can i can do it and i enjoy it and then i don't know why i've just been thinking about a compound i I shot one here in the archery shop and um i have man i i i tell you what's the weirdest thing about it i my longbow is really fast. I know this doesn't sound fast, but the 630 grain arrow shoots 191 feet per second. That is flying out of a tr- traditional bow. And that's what my bow does, and it's 61 pounds. But when you pick up a compound and it shoots 300 feet per second, I literally felt like I went, I, I literally felt like I got a rifle on my hands. <laughs> I, I, could I wish Cody that. felt the same. <laughs> like that's that's what it feels like to me. Like it's super fast. It's super quiet. And my bow, my long bows are sixty inches long. This this new Matthews I bought is twenty eight. Like it's it's a big it's big it's a big adjustment. And for me to say that I'm not enjoying it, like. I'd be lying. Like I, there's no shame in me picking up this compound, and I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. Like I'm, <laughs> I can't wait to kill a deer with it. Yeah, I could, I could see like, I, I, we've shot tradition a little bit in the yard, and it's fun. I could see the fun to it, but man, I, I'm gonna keep my compound for like, a while. Just being in that <laughs> moment, and I mean, obviously, we're just out here messing around, but. Being in that moment, like actually pulling back on a deer, I feel like I need to shoot like forty does. Yeah, with the you know, with the recurve, yeah, to freaking to to understand it and function with it, and, and just be like cool and be like, all right, you know, all right, now I'm I'm ready for the yeah. for, for the blood rush. I need to shoot like <laughs> six forget horns. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. to really get you leveled out. <laughs> I um, I think it's 2017 was my first year. I shot a doe. It was the first deer I ever drew back on in October with a Hoyt Buffalo. That's a recurve. It was 50 pounds. I'm a double lunged deer. She, she ran a pretty good ways. I found her. Um, I guess it was, yeah, it was the same year. I shot 134 inch eight pointer at about 25 yards with that, um, with that recurve 2018 i shot 141 inch junked up non-typical on the ground with a homemade longbow um and then there was last year still packing longbow and 
just couldn't get on one. But it's fun, man. It's just it's just a different experience. And you do have it, a super sexy longbow, though. That thing mm. is sweet looking. The double carbon? <laughs> yeah. Clementine? Yeah, Clementine, the orange <laughs> one. Oh, she's a beaut, man. Yeah. It's um, it's so weird because, like, my wood bow, that wood bow weighs one pound. That's it. That That's double insane. carbon bow, Clementine weighs two. And it, I'm not going to lie, when you pack those bows to the woods, like, it literally feels like you have a piece of popcorn in your hand. <laughs> About to kill it, this buck with a piece of popcorn. Yeah. And that thing, man, like when you got that thing hanging on the bow hook and it's and it's a good fall day where the wind's whipping, like that bow is like moving. It's it's blowing in the tree and you're like, Man, I gotta I gotta kill something with this thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's all that's all I got is this twig here blowing <laughs> blowing in the wind. Yeah, I I wouldn't have the confidence to even to do it, man. But there's a lot of people out there making the switch and props to them. I just I can't do it yet. I think it would be really cool if, like, you made the switch and then you completely, like, your kids start hunting, right, whatever. You make the switch and then you completely start your buck transition over. You go back to shooting small buck. You, you and your kid out pointer. there both smashing forked yeah. horns. Hell yeah. Eight-pointer. Cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> slowly getting bigger with a recurve. I think that would be super cool. But yeah. for me just to go out there like, okay, I got Magnum. He's potential like 180, 190. Switch into trad. <laughs> <laughs> nope <laughs> nope if i could take a gun on this public i'd have a gun out there quicker than hell <laughs> yes. yes don't worry bro right there with you yeah so yeah right. but yeah what's that what's your new bow weigh it's probably like four top five times heavier than that bow isn't it man i don't even i don't even know it's heavy compared to what i'm used to uh, so i'm shooting a uh, the new Matthews VXR in 28 and I'm shooting it in 75 pounds. Um, and I haven't really shot it much and I haven't, I haven't shot it much because when I was at the archery shop, um, they didn't have the sight I wanted. I want a spot hog hog at five pin with the point, uh, tens with the point 10 pins, mm -hmm. five pin, because that's what I've always shot. And that's what I was like, I'm comfortable with. And they didn't have it. Spot Hog was back ordered, so I ordered it on Amazon, and the site still hasn't come in yet. Um, I have shot the bow. I'm shooting a, a 200 and uh, or a 280 spine arrow out of it. It's super stiff, 165 grains up front, and um, it feels great. It's I'm really telling you, it feels like a gun that doesn't kick to me. And I cannot wait till that sight comes in next week, and I cannot wait to get that thing sighted in. I mean, like, really, I like, wait. for me, like, a shotgun is, like, 100 yards, right? Mm -hmm. So, bow, 40, 50. So, you were shooting 20, 25 with your recurve. So, you pretty much picked up a gun. You could shoot out to 50 yards yeah, now. So, you doubled your effective range. I'll just have, like yeah, me I, going from a bow to a shotgun. I doubled my effective range. You know what I mean? So, I understand why you said it's a gun, because you doubled your range. Yeah, so I could I with shooting traditional I could shoot with with Clementine I could shoot 30 yards comfortably and I shot it fairly good and with this compound I'll have a 60 yard pin and I'll just shoot you straight like I'm going to feel sorry for a deer if it comes within 60 yards of me. Yeah, I mean that's I, I'm going I'm going to kill him. Yeah. I would say with your with your mental attitude and all your focus and energy going into trad like i mean just making the switch you know not, Back. not backwards but going that way like yeah. of course you're going to be able to shoot out to 60 yeah it's like you know you know i mean and that is really what it is like i had a you know when i went to made that uh, switch to traditional uh four years ago you know, I didn't know anybody that done it, so I was reaching out to people just, you know, all over the the United States that I was friends with on social media, and I got I got really good. I became really good friends with a guy named Harmon Carson, and he's in Louisiana. And y'all should probably do a podcast with him because he do, he kills big deer where big deer don't exist. And I, I'll never forget this. He's like, man, it's like it's it's just a mental thing, Josh. Like. If you're not confident with that bow, like you're not going to shoot it good. Like you've got to be confident with it. So the first year I had that that Hoyt 
uh, recurve, man, like I've done a b- bunch of blank billing. I built my confidence up. And like when I got in that stand, like I knew like, hey, if a deer's within 30 yards of me, I'm I'm going to kill it. Like th- I'm not letting it get away from me. And I never did. Like when a deer come within 30 yards of me and I wanted to shoot it, it died. And I'm not saying that to be cocky, but that's just the the mindset that I was trained to have, and it works. Like, you just have to be confident. Yeah, I mean, confidence is key no matter what you do, but I could guarantee you with those bows, there's a, so much into setting up, and if you – I. It, I feel like you're just like one with the arrow. So if you're thinking, oh, this is going to be a bad shot and you let it go, I feel yeah, like it's going it to be, gonna be you even do shot. that with your compound. Like right when you release, you're like, that was a bad shot before it even hits a target. You know, you can just yeah. feel it. You're like, oh, that didn't feel right. You know what I mean? So got to be confident that you can nail that right off the rip. Yeah. So with the, with the trad bow, I could feel that when I anchored, like I'd be like, oh, this ain't right. And I got to where I was shooting and I, and it, and it wasn't good. And I, once again, I reached back at the harm and I was like, Hey man, like I draw back and it doesn't feel right. And it's not right. And he's like, well, man, you need to let the bow down. Yeah, <laughs> 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 just don't shoot. Mm-hmm. And then, so I, that's what I got to. And yeah, it's just so much, not just with shooting a bow with hunting, like your attitude that you put towards it. It's so mental. Like if, if you go to anything in life, your marriage, to work, to the woods with your kids. If you go to anything with a bad attitude, like you can't expect a good outcome. You just can't do it. So uh, a positive, you know, outlook and staying focused and, you know, giving it all you got. And it's normally it's worked out good for me. Got to be positive about everything, man. Mm -hmm. Positivity drives positivity. It really does, man. Because who wants to be around a, f- a friend that's a Debbie Downer? Seriously, you, no one does. I mean, not, yeah, no one. I want my friends like, to crack me real hard, but then be like, "Hey, bro, it's cool." <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I want them to, 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 to ride, ride me pretty hard, make fun of me. But if you're not positive, down the road, you know what I mean. The guy that comes mm-hmm. into work every day is like man, last night, blah, 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 and then this is happening at work, and this guy's doing this. It doesn't affect him at all, but he's mad about it. I'm like, I got I got bucks to kill, man. I got time to be <laughs> I got time to be negative about some dude I don't even know. You know what I mean? I don't know. And you, and I, so I recently down – or um, I don't even know what you would call that. I turned my Facebook back on the first time in three years. Man – Talk about a bunch of bag of dicks. Oh, yeah. like, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to turn that thing back off and get welcome, back to Instagram. Welcome to the wild, wild west, bro. That's why yeah, we like, like Twitter. Everybody's like, yeah, what do you like, want Twitter for? I'm like, bro, the people are positive over there. Yeah, yeah. I think the age is like the age is higher. Or I don't know what it is, but they're just not a bag of dicks. They're just over not there. a bag of dicks over there. But yeah, I mean, some of the Facebook stuff's going on. We had Clint uh, Clint on, and he talked about it a little bit. It's just so much negativity out there. People commenting on shit they don't even know you, but they're like, "What's that? What? Why'd you shoot that deer for?" But you, you have no idea what I got going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just yeah, they don't know. That might have been the biggest deer the guy's seen in his life. Oh, I never would have shot that thing. You know what I mean? They have no context to anything, but they got something to say. I know that. Yeah, uh, and I've done that. I can use this for example. This was years ago before I turned off Facebook, but I had a deer that I had a couple years worth of pictures with, and I'm going to say the deer was no younger, was no younger than six. He may have been, he, you know, I really don't know, but the deer looked the exact same every year. I had a picture of him for like three years and he was at least three the first year. And then I like posted a picture and everybody's like, oh no, you don't need to shoot that deer. He's two or three. <laughs> I'm like, man, you don't even know what you're talking about. Like this deer's like, he's old, man. He's older than five. I'm positive. We should post a picture of Westside and ask people to age him. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's like a three-year-old, this young three-year-old. He's like nine. (laughs) (laughs) 
people, Man, I, I, I can't age deer in the summer. You, people are like, we get messages sometimes, hey, will you age this deer? You know, and I do the right thing. I'm like, hey, I am terrible at this, but I'll give it my best shot. You know what I mean? And we get a lot of those messages, and I give them my best shot. But if the guy's from, like, Texas, bro, I don't even know what your deer look like. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I can't help you out. Yeah, it's just it's a guessing game, man. I had a I had a um, Bob just tell me this one time, and I think there's a little bit of truth to it. He's like field aging a deer is almost kind of like field aging a cow. And when I think about it, the more and more I think about it, the more and more like I kind of lean that way in a sense. So you never really know, man. You never really do. I I've had one deer turned in in my life to where I actually sent off. The deer come back with like an A plus rating. I thought he was a three year old. He was eight. Wow! Wow! And that was the deer I killed with the uh, with the recurve. He looked just like a three year old coming in. He looked just like a three year old in the trail camera pictures. But when I sent him in, they were like, "Oh, ninety percent sure this deer is eight and a half." <laughs> so, I mean, just take that for what it's worth damn that's crazy yeah it's it's tough to age anything yeah i was saying trail cam radio did that podcast with uh um the teeth age guys yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the only thing i can mm-hmm. think of is deer lab but it's not that um yeah the place that examines all the teeth that you know where you send it in and um th- they said that you know aging on the hoof is wrong or and then when you start trying to do that over and over again, the only way to actually age them is by the teeth. And then when you start aging them off, you know, body characteristics or antler size or whatever, then you habitually start field aging wrong. Mm-hmm. So you're just like year after year, it was like, all right, you know, it's three, it's four. But, but well, it's all wrong because what it's based off of is wrong. Yeah. So the only way to accurately do it is by the teeth. And it was kind of a eye opener for me. I'm like, well, yeah, okay. So like, I'm done doing that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or you know, try to be. But I mean, you just know a mature deer like when you see it, at least while you're hunting. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, yeah, this is mature in the summertime. Yeah, years going up history. Mm-hmm. Man, I just always told everybody like. <sighs> I just got over the whole thing. I got everything we're talking about. I'm over it. And I've been over it. Like if a deer comes in and my heart really starts beating and I start reaching for my bow, like I feel sorry for him. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he's, he's, you know, he's probably fixing to die. That's, and what, that's, that's, at, that's yeah. what I go after, you know? And I've got some deer that probably barely score Pope and young. And I've got some deer way over on, and it, it's all the same to me. Like it was, it was a great hunt, and I shot them for a reason. I I don't have one deer on my wall, and I can say that one deer out of ten, I don't have any regret of, and I don't have any problem showing them to anybody because I promise you, I worked my ass off for them. Yeah, that's what makes that's what makes you feel good. You know, what I mean, yeah. putting that work in. But yeah, I don't I don't care who you are. I mean, there might be some guys out there that have really. Okay, a guy like me who kills a few good bucks, you know, if a 125 is coming at you, you're pretty jacked. You're pretty <laughs> amped up. If a true 125, you know what I mean? And if I'm, I'm if a really solid 125, 130 is coming at me and I got two buck tags in Illinois, it's, he's probably dead, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not going to feel bad about it. Like, I'm going to kill him. He might be three, might be two. Yeah. I don't really care. The smaller he is, the easier he's going to be able to drag out of this ravine that I just killed him <laughs> yeah. in anyways. You know what I mean? So, but, uh, that, you know, the second buck tag, I'm going to be more picky, of course. That's why I've done my, my bow hunting career in Illinois. You know what I mean? But I, I would probably say that that deer's three for sure over there. West side's three. He's probably three. You know, mm-hmm. the nine pointer, I think he's older than that. But I mean, yeah. you know, who knows? But anyways, I know half the bucks I got are probably three. You know what I mean? So I'm not right. out there killing nine-year-olds. I'm out there killing whatever I want. You know what I mean? <laughs> that looks solid. Thunk. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I've done that once and been like, woo, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not not so solid. Yeah. But, yeah, been there. Yeah, but uh, I was still jacked. You know what I mean? I was super jacked. I called you. I was, I was jacked. Oh, yeah. But 
Of course. Yeah. Of course. I didn't get a call. Ah, yeah. No. This year. This year. <laughs> this year we're gonna have to call you and have your 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 big muscly ass come down and help us drag these deer out. <laughs> but like, all right. It's only three fifteen. Just just incline press them up this ravine for me, will yeah. you? Yeah. No big deal. It's like six t- reps. <laughs> <laughs> so my goal is this year. Because I, you know, I pretty much hunt by myself other than on this private piece. So my goal is this year, I've told myself, like, I'm picking this deer up this year, and I'm walking out with it. I'm not dragging it. I'm not pulling a deer cart on here. I'm picking this thing up, putting it on my shoulders, and I'm walking out, and I'm not stopping. I've seen a, yeah, I've seen a few people do that, like, probably 10 feet and take a picture. You're, like, one of the only dudes I know that could do that full full <laughs> right. sin and actually I'm make it happen. A, I'm um if I kill one on this on this coal mine ground, I'm walking to the truck with it. Like yeah. no doubt about it. I'm picking it up and I'm walking to the truck. When I seen you had nine hundred on the, the leg press the other day, I was like, No one else at the gym because they ain't got weights, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Oh. I can't even add forty five enough to get to nine hundred. That's a lot. <laughs> I say we're only at the two place stage yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say I'd say leg press, I'm good for max rep, which leg press is kind of cheating. I'm saying I'm good for twelve or 1,300 pounds. That's freaking nuts. Yeah, I seen you're so, like repping 900. I'm like, no one else in that gym. <laughs> they ain't got a 45 plate <laughs> anywhere on the that's treadmill. Some yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one guy hitting the dumbbells, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Well, if he carries what? a buck Let's... to the truck, you're – yeah. You have no chance in this Murph. No, I know. You're dead. I'm getting demolished in this Murph, man. I'm I don't just, give yeah. a shit how much yeah. you train. I'm getting demolished. I'm I'm training hard, bro. I'm coming for hey, you. Can I, there's not a lot of people that know about this, and I'm sure Chad will listen to this. But I'm not letting him beat me. He is not going to beat me. <laughs> I say, he is like not him. going to beat me. Like Chad, Chad is a, a great athlete. He Chad is a great guy. He is extremely fit. And I'm telling you, Chad will not beat me. <laughs> <laughs> like he will not beat me. I will make damn sure Chad will not beat me. I'm coming in as this little scrawny sleeper dude about to, <laughs> to blow past you. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually about about. 120 into the air squats. I'm done. I'm I'm out. <laughs> no, listen, I'm no good joke. with you. Be- I'm good with you beating me. You can beat me all day long. <laughs> Chad, Chad's, Chad's not doing it. Chad's not beating me. I just want to drive down there and be like, I can't get less than the left in the dust by these dudes. Right? That's all. I don't, I don't want to happen. But uh, I did. I did three quarters of one. And I didn't walk right for two days. <laughs> it absolutely destroyed me. So I was like, this is a little harder than I thought it was going to be. So I'd have been like, what, like 48-ish minutes? 50? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd have been around about 48 minutes. I didn't run the first mile, the fresh mile. But okay. I'd have been around the 48, 50-minute mark. Um, step, my pull-up game was weak. Weak sauce. That's where, uh, that's where mine is weak sauce. Yeah, is I stepped it up game. hardcore. I, if I if I can do CrossFit pull ups, I'm in the game. I can if I all I got to do is get my chin above the bar. I'm in. If I got to do strict form pull ups, I'm in trouble. <laughs> 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 but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to to make, to go down there. I don't know. I'm trying to convince Homie to come with me. So we'll see if see if it happens. But yeah, I, I'm excited to come down and and hang out for it for one, and then abuse my body for about 50 minutes so i don't walk <laughs> right for a day <laughs> that's no joke that workout anybody that wants to try that, that that is insane that's a hard workout to do i felt like i was pretty good shape you know what i mean and nope soft cotton <laughs> candy eating <laughs> oh so everybody that doesn't know what we're talking about we're talking about doing the murphy challenge this year that's um that's what we're talking about. A few of us are going to get to go and do that. Yeah, I'm hopefully not going to get embarrassed too bad. <laughs> uh, it'll be fun, man. As oh, long yeah. as as long as I beat Chad, we're good and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to trip Chad if he's in the lead, just because I don't want to see you raging at the end. <laughs> you gonna be like, all right, we're going to the gym after this, Max, and <laughs> be like, I'm out, man. Your max yeah. is – my one one rep max is your warm-up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? I can't get uh, on that train, but 
Well, we talked about all this stuff, you know, you're transitioning, you're changing stuff up, and I think this is a cool episode to just say that it is okay to grow as a hunter however you want to grow. If you've been hunting private and you want to go to public, go. If you've been hunting public and that's what's cool or whatever and this fire private ground comes up, go. No one's stopping you. The only thing that's stopping you is what people you think are going to say about you. You know what I mean? If if you've been using a compound for years and you're like, you know what, I want to shoot a crossbow this year, shoot a damn crossbow. There's nothing stopping you other than yourself. And I think that this episode is a great place to say that. You know, you're super experienced hunter, super successful, successful, and you're changing mm. it up. And there's no reason why you can't change it up. You know what I mean? And I feel like a lot of people know the name and – there's, there's people out there that are listening that are on the fence about trying something. And the reason they're on their fence is they don't want to be the guy that's hunting out of a saddle. You know what I mean? Or mm. they don't want to be the guy that's doing this or whatever. But if you want to do it, do it. You know what I mean? You might get some jokes from your friends, but that's all in good fun. That's if, what friends are for. Yeah, if, if you're a friend, you know what I mean? But uh, I'll never be in a saddle. You know what I mean? I just, just <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. No, no. I, if, I would, if I hunted a saddle, I'd get just absolutely... <laughs> Shit, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would just. People would just annihilate me. But uh, that that just goes to say, you know, what I mean, do whatever you want to do. Make sure you're having fun doing it, and that's plain and simple, right? Man, I've always told everybody, like every time I've done a podcast, you know, don't let somebody else dictate what you need to use or what you need to do. Like you need to figure out what you need to do. You need to set your own goals, and you. You need to make those like retainable goals, and you need to and you need to try to reach them. It doesn't matter what's hip, what's cool, what everybody else is doing. It one hundred percent needs to be based on you, how you hunt, and how you feel in life. And just remember, if things aren't good at home when you leave at home, like you're not going to be good in the woods. And the day that you know you put hunting before your wife, your girlfriend. Or my, let's not say girlfriend. I mean, let's yeah. say your wife. Let's let's say your wife and your kids. Like it's a bad day, man. Like get yeah. your priorities straight, um, and have fun. And that's that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, gotta have fun, man. I don't know how many times we said that, and it gets stressful at times. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And you wanna you wanna get it done. You've been working all year to do it, and. I'm gonna try to be better this year. I'm not gonna be a sissy out there. I'm gonna try to not be a sissy. You guys hold me to this. If you hear me being a sissy on this podcast, I need some <laughs> hashtag don't be a sissy. Like hashtag bush cam. <laughs> yes. I don't know how many people <laughs> hashtag bush cam does <laughs> from the last episode. <laughs> but uh yeah. We we're loving this, man. We we started this podcast and I seen you a couple years ago, had you on. Like I said, you're one of the many, many solid friendships that we've started from this and uh if we wouldn't have this podcast, we would never talk to you, probably. Yeah. So. So am I the am I the only person that y'all have done three podcasts with? First, first, yeah. No. Yeah. Ooh. Pop that cherry. Heck yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's always good to to get back and talk to the Stone Cold Killers and see what they got going on, especially since season's getting here. And like I said, it's just damn good to talk to you, man. There's, there's. I don't have a very a lot of very good friends, you know what I mean? I got people that I talk to, but I, I, you're up there, bro. I appreciate you. You're a good dude, and uh, there needs to be more good dudes like you on social. So I'm glad you're on Facebook. Stay on there. Keep, <laughs> yeah, please. Keep posting stuff. Keep no um, no promises, man. Yeah, yeah. I re- <laughs> every, time I turn, every time I turn that thing on, it's something I don't want to see or read. So Yeah, it's pretty pretty savage out there, Well. All right, man. Well, we appreciate you coming on and chit-chatting with us. This right here, I will never not like talking to this guy. I know. He's just super solid. We almost need to think about hiring him for voiceover. Yeah, I know. His voiceover (laughs) is way better than ours. He should probably have the podcast. (laughs) But uh, I I, uh, know our listeners always, you know, enjoy when he's on. And this was a kind of a different, you know, different podcast for him. He's talked tactics a lot and he wanted to come on and kind of break this down and i think it's cool man don't get caught up in the hype yeah don't get caught up in the hype or what everybody else is doing what you think you ought to be doing because someone else has got this new toy new thing that they're doing just do you hunt you hunt the way you want to hunt and and uh, do your thing so um, remember always do the right thing leave a legacy 
and Whitetail Legacy is out, and we'll be coming in your ear holes next Wednesday.